just want to uh, make perfectly clear that if you're not used to working with high voltages and currents, this is not the place to start. Really would advise you not to take on this project. If you're not used to working with 240 volts and not aware of the dangers when you have currents as high as 300 amps flowing through a circuit, you can get a very severe shock. These kind of voltages and currents can kill quite easily. So be careful. If you take on this project, do so at your own risk. I just want to make that perfectly clear. So here's one of the front jacks. This is the ground terminal from the transformer. So I'm threading it down inside in order to use one of these clips. There's just not enough there. I didn't find any that fit that size wire and that size stud. There's lots of room for the bolt because the uh, connector that inserts in here doesn't go in very far. Progress thus far. I've taken the output, or the input rather, the diode pack, D3 and D4 I believe it was. Uh, I crimped this eyelet on with vice grips, repeated crimpings. Seems to be tight. I've got a stainless steel 3 8 inch coarse bolt. This is aluminum and the inner is brass. And we got copper and stainless steel. What's the chances of having a battery? Corroding like crazy. So that's why I didn't want to go with steel. I went with stainless. So I don't have a brass bolt. And I don't have no idea where I'd get one. And I don't have an aluminum bolt. I don't know where I'd get one of those either. So I put it all back in, crimp that in place. I've got a piece of plastic pipe that goes up in here by the spring. Possibly you can see it here. Right down in there. And I'll tie wrap that so it can't shift. The current adjust comes up and gets close to that wire, but that's at zero, so I'm not going to be using that position. And then it goes all the way down to 300 amps, no problem. So that should be okay. I'm going to do some more insulation here. You can see the electrical tape is shrinking. And I'll do the positive. One thing to watch with these cable terminals is that there is a thin or a smaller diameter on one end than the other. This is the larger one is for the cable, the smaller one is for inside the chassis. This one threads to 3 eighths of an inch and this one does not. So I take the diodes out again to uh, this hole I could drill, no problem, but I can't drill this one for the connection. So I'll do that and I'll retape this, just makes it easier. And I have to, there's a phenolic here. And that's how far they're recessed normally, which is fine for this one because it's well away from the chassis. But the first one, I've drilled slightly deeper here, and then I'll put, I'll glue these rubber pieces over top just to make sure there's no arcing. A little bit of unwanted arc can ruin your whole day. So down in there we have a lug nut that comes from the diode pack. So I'm going to put in this piece of plastic I had from an old piece of equipment I stripped and that'll be an insulator just to make sure that the lug does not short out to the case and then I have drilled out both these holes that were needed for the front for the output wires same thing up here I've sanded them down with emery cloth both sides to make them conductive and get rid of the paint and I will reattach everything, make sure that nothing can short out, and then finish shaping the holes in the front. I'm going to have to put the positive up here and negative down here. This being the negative output goes straight to there, and the positive output from here goes across to there. That's the best way to do it. Uh, I have some welding uh, extender cable which is thicker, so there should be a higher output voltage since it's rectified AC. 
and that should take care of that part. And I will double check everything again to make sure all the connections are correct because I do not want a 100 amp short. And one thing to be sure, if you're ever going to try attempt anything like this, make absolute certain that you have an isolated transformer like this one. If you have an auto transformer, there is no way you can do this. You'll end up with a big short. So it has to be isolated. The secondary, which is over here, must not have an electrical connection to the primary. Only a magnetic. And here's the sliding core. Change the output current and voltage. And then the main core for the transformer. By my calculations, these two cables have to be short. And 90 degrees, the terminals must be 90 degrees opposite each other. And the one cable is opposite to the other. So you always get them right. And that, this one, will go from here, here, end up to the bottom connector, which I haven't put in yet. And likewise, one from here comes across and goes to there. So I'll cut those holes oblong to fit the jack. And that should work. Uh, one thing I don't like about this is I can't turn off the DC. The DC will always be live. But I do not have room for a big switch that can handle that kind of current. So it's going to be the same as the AC in that one power switch and then the jacks are live. So hopefully that's not a problem. I've got the plexiglass scrap down in there it's held in with one screw but it's pushed up against it's this width pushed up against the track for the diodes so it can't move. That's, I've got that screw nice and tight so that you keep everything isolated. There's a gap between all of these. One thing I don't know about these diodes I didn't look up was the reverse voltage breakdown. So hopefully they can handle that. I will uh, check a little further. And other than that everything's isolated. Nothing touches the chassis anywhere. Put this track down here to keep it up away from the chassis. Got the phenolic blocks pivot point there which is anchored at the back and likewise at the top anchored at the back through phenolic so there's no shorts to ground and these cables go up and they're insulated from each other they got uh, well the tape which is kind of meaningless but does provide some protection and then plastic coverings over the wires. Well that should work. Now, this is all insulated by a plastic tube. Should be okay. Here's the handy little tool I used to cut out the opening. I drilled the hole first with a unibit and then I cut it to match the offset of this. It fits nicely. Not much jiggling. And then I'll do the lower one here and label them appropriately and try and hook up cables. Let's see what happens. So there it is all set to go. So I've got it bolted up with the stainless steel bolts. Short piece to there. That's the negative. Likewise up here. Short piece keeping clear of everything to the positive. I'll track through the wiring again just to make sure everything is correct. More checking is not necessarily a bad thing. One fly in this possible ointment is that these diodes have a peak reverse voltage of 1600 volts. Uh, right now on the computer I'm using I can't find any information on these ones but they're smaller so they should have usually a higher peak reverse voltage. Lower current 
smaller physical size usually is a higher reverse voltage. So 1600 might not be sufficient when the arc is struck. Now, it doesn't run at high voltage, but when you first strike the arc, there may be a very high reverse voltage. So um, I might be blowing these things up. I don't know. So far, I can't find anything that states what an arc welder might produce for reverse voltage when it sparks, or voltage, period, when it sparks. So I will try it at lower currents, see how it works after I finish tracing all the circuits. There it is, humming away. I've done a bit of a weld, 100 amps, 1 8 inch steel. Seems to work good. Show you out here. This is um, this is actually thinner rod than I should be using. I think it's 1 16th. That's all I got. 6011. My book says uh, DC should have electrode positive, so that's what I did. Uh, better welding for sure. Not as much uh, arcing and mess and splatter. These pieces here, these spots here for me trying to start it with an old rod not being able to see. But there you have it. Seems to work. It penetrated pretty good. It could crank up the current a bit, you know, which wouldn't be a problem. But it seems to be working. So Hopefully you found that helpful and encouraging, and um, I would try and keep the diodes down around 300 amps, so you get a better, you know, in theory, a better uh, peak reverse voltage protection. Other than that, I think it's going to be fine. And when diodes get hot, they tend to short, and that's the last thing you want.